There's this thing with the, the invisible world with me. Paintings come from the same world, but they're not, they're not dreams. I mean, people think that I'm trying to illustrate my dreams, but that's, you know, they're just spontaneous as dreams are. I have to get myself empty. I have to be like an idiot. I have to get rid of everything that, that I know and leave it behind me and like jump, you know, forward to get it down and then figure it out later. I love the art from the Dark Ages, <laughs> the 1200s, the 1100s. And I like dramatists like Rembrandt and Goya, you know. Like, the dark against the light. Picasso was a huge influence on me, and his Vollard drawings was probably the most important influence that I had. The Art Students League, I, we painted from models, you know. I was having a, um, a hard time, and I sought out a, an art therapist. She turned me on to automatic drawing. It's a technique the surrealists and the abstract expressionists used. And I was hooked. I, you know, it's like a raw shock. You, you throw out some paint, or, and then you search for, for things looking back at you. Within a few years, I, I found my voice. I, I, it just started flooding me. All the images started coming. When you deal with the psyche, you realize it talks through color and energy and form and, you know, but it also communicates through image. And I think it's the job of the artist to deliver fresh imagery to the world, you know? As a kid, I, I remember sitting in my, my room and looking at the wood panels, and I would see faces in them, you know? I think I had this ability when I was younger. Our grandfather lived with us. He was an Orthodox Jew, and he, you know, put all the garb on and pray every, you know, whatever. And uh, my parents were secular humanists, they called themselves, you know, atheists. To me, there was something missing from both of them. And what was missing was uh, the imagination and metaphor. These um, Saturnian Orthodox religions of thou shalt, uh, doesn't resonate with me. If you move into your imaginal world, uh, it's amazing if you let it lead you and don't impose yourself on it where it, it can lead you. <clears throat> I, it's, it's interesting, it's like some kind of, uh, some kind of voice tells me the next color. <laughs> I don't, you know, it's something uh, interior. And I kind of trust it. See, all, all these um, images starting to take form here. And I don't really like it that much because I like them to, to hide a little bit more so I can get more layers of, of paint on. It's hard to say if the images are coming in or leaving sometimes. And then, you know, I manipulate the painting and, and, and wait for images to start showing up. And I kill a lot of images each painting. And they always come back, you know, at some other point. So, I've done about 110 of these progressions. This is one of the earlier ones. This reminded me of St. Francis. 
the birds all over them. There's a lot of virtues that you're honing as an artist. There's patience, there's perseverance, there's endurance. Can you suffer through 10,000 strokes in one painting without really having anything? And then go back and do, do it some more, you know? It's really 10,000 mistakes strung together <laughs> when you think about it. I mean, I'd like to do like one big retrospective of, of everything and, and just one opus, you know, to see the whole flow of it before I die. <laughs> just once, that would be nice. The first eight, 18 years I used acrylics and the last 18 I've used oils. In the last 10 or so, I've used these uh, new water mixable oils. I got a call from an artist who was uh, sick from all his materials that he used, and he told me to switch now <laughs> while I was young. He died a short time after that. When I put it up on the computer in a smaller version, you get to see it a little differently, how it's vibrating, where, where you just couldn't see anything before, maybe. Your, your unconscious is steps ahead of, of who you are, you know? So uh, the paintings, they're, they're showing me like where I'm headed as much as anything else. This was the painting two, uh, two months before the clinical depression. So this was, uh, the going mad was coming. <laughs> Originally, I titled it, uh, What Cares Venus for Dust Storms on Mars. Mars is the god of war, the masculine. It's the anger, the libido, the sex drive. Uh, right after this painting, I, I was down and out. You know, I was in a clinical depression. I was like stone on my couch. I remember Joan pulling me off one day, you know, just literally dragging me off. This was about 1990. And I would say for three years around then, um, you know, it was like a, night a nightmare. I don't know, you know, for people who've experienced it, they know it. Going down deep is a great opportunity. Great opportunity. I call it a creative illness, you know. I mean, you can find aspects of yourself uh, that you never knew existed, you know. This is the moon above, the sun below, going down to find the light rather than going up like Icarus, who gets burned up. I think at the time I was quite depressed when I painted this. It's only later that I started feeling the light coming through. Ah, ah, I got it. After this, the world became a little bit more animated for me, you know, more magical in a way. You know, animals would show up and I, I would feel like they were bringing me messages. Spirits in the trees, and, and then the planets started talking to me. The gift of astrology came to me. This is my birth chart. Saturn and Neptune together on my ascendant. It is a kind of depressing uh, combination. It's like the marriage 
of impermanence the Neptune and gravity the Saturn this is the form and and no form I'm always trying to find the balance between these two energies there always seems to be witnesses in my paintings you know it feels like something is being asked of I usually see them myself in all the characters. I, I think I have to embody them to, to really make them work. So I really have to be the devil characters and the godlike characters and the compassionate. And, and what you decide to leave is, is, you know, who you are at that moment. And then I, when Joan comes home, I, I drop it, you know, and I'm no longer the artist. I, a friend of mine uh, wrote a poem for me years ago called The Fool's Mask. Basically, it's about I put this mask on to paint, and I enter all these crazy worlds. When I take it off, I'm just like an average Joe, you know, walking. I have this, I have this ability to be in that place when I need to and to put it away and go into the real world, you know. I think I was stuck in the underworld in the early works. And since the depression, I, I think I have the ability to travel in both places now. You know, the, the vertical line that we talk about in mythology, of the psyche and the spirit, which I don't think any critics um, will address in this country or in the world, I don't know. I mean, it's flatlined to me. It's concept, it's materialism, you know. We don't like going up and down, you know. I don't know, I just uh, have this ability to do this and I think it would have been a shame if I didn't follow through with it.